From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our Wednesday forecast plus photos of black bears being dumped in a Montana landfill surface. But first, our top story. We begin with the latest on the historic vote to remove Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House. He was ousted after angering right flank members of his party by working with Democrats on a funding bill to avoid a government shutdown. Just eight GOP members, including Montana Congressman Matt Rosendale, voted for McCarthy's removal, while all 208 Democrats refused to come to his rescue. Rosendale says back in January, Republicans passed rules requiring 72 hours notice before voting on bills, asked for single subject bills and 12 individual bills to fund government. He says the four appropriations bills passed last week illustrate the rules were not implemented. Kevin McCarthy has violated the trust of the Republican conference many times over, over the last nine months. And that's why he's no longer the Speaker of the House. I'm tired of being lectured by people that have been here for 20 years that have led us to $33 trillion of national debt. I think we better start doing things a little differently. The House is on recess, but is expected to vote on a long-term replacement next Wednesday. Several county leaders across Montana are taking the state to court, claiming they're charging residents too much on property taxes. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian breaks down the disputes and what could come next. Some county leaders have been saying the state is misinterpreting a provision in law and collecting too much in property taxes. Now, some counties have said they're going to act on their own to reduce that amount, and the state has asked a judge to step in and decide who's right. Counties from Missoula, Gallatin and Flathead to Beaverhead and Fergus have all proposed or approved plans to reduce how many property tax mills they charge on behalf of the state school equalization fund. I mean, it's been the battle cry all through this whole session and all year long is to try to control property taxes. And that's exactly what we're doing. The state filed in district court seeking to block that move and get a ruling that their interpretation is correct. For every $1,000 of taxable value on a property, one mill charges $1 in taxes. Local governments have a cap on how many mills they can charge so that their revenues rise by less than the inflation rate. That means most jurisdictions lowered mills this year, with property values spiking. But for 20 years, the state has charged a constant 95 mills, with the revenues intended to ensure equity in education across school districts. Counties argued a provision in the law should subject those mills to the same limits as local mills. But the state says it has the authority to charge the full 95 mills because it's banked mills it could have charged in previous years. Beaverhead County Commissioners asked the Attorney General to issue a ruling, but he declined, saying the issue was almost certainly going to court, and that was the right place to resolve the question. Beaverhead County Commissioner Mike McGinley said voting to lower the mills themselves was the best move for taxpayers. In this year, with uh, property taxes going up to extreme as they are with his reappraisals, even if the state had the right to assess these extra mills, this is the year they have the responsibility not to. This week, the Montana Federation of Public Employees, the union that represents public school teachers, expressed strong opposition to the county's move. There is no way to decrease the 95 mills and not harm the school that your kids go to down the street from your house. MFPE President Amanda Curtis said leaders could have done more to adjust the tax formula and lower the burden on residential properties, but that counties shouldn't be pointing the finger at public education. I would ask anyone who wants to cut the funding to public schools by filling it in from some other piece of the budget, what other portion of public services they would cut. This issue is likely to come to a head soon as counties are expecting to mail out property tax bills around the start of November. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. A Billings man could soon face murder charges for shooting Michael Duran during a road rage incident in downtown Billings. MTN's Jackie Coffin has the latest. It was tension, then relief from Michael Duran's family that you could feel inside the courtroom over the course of this two-day coroner's inquest. I'll take you back inside the courtroom now to see how it all played out. Deliberate homicide. The cause of death 
was by criminal means. For Sylvia Duran, a jury's decision read aloud in court Tuesday was one she's been waiting for for nearly 14 months. I feel like I've been carrying a million pounds on my back this year. and I was grateful that they saw right through everything and came to that conclusion. Sylvia's son, 29-year-old Michael Duran, was shot and killed on the evening of August 20th, 2022, following a road rage fight between Michael and another driver, 31-year-old Jacob Troxel. The fight happened downtown on 4th Avenue and 32nd Street, right outside of the KTVQ station, and our cameras caught the whole thing. Footage that was reviewed carefully in a Yellowstone County courtroom Monday and Tuesday. Among other things, I really wanted to have the opportunity to explore some of the concepts of self-defense that were thrown out here. Um, you heard even evidence as far as 911 calls and statements from these witnesses on the stand that talked about those things. The video shows what happened. Duran in one vehicle and Troxel in the other got into an argument and physical fight with Troxel throwing the first punch. At one point, Troxel gets back into his car. Duran turns to walk away, then abruptly turns back, trying to hit Troxel through his car window. Troxel grabs a gun from his backpack in the back seat and shoots Duran seven times. Duran later died at a hospital. Witnesses driving in the area and law enforcement who responded told parts of the story beyond the video. Could Mr. Troxell have just driven away? Yes. Okay. Well, for that matter, could Mr. Duran have also gotten in his car yes. and driven away? Yes, he could. Ultimately, the jury decided the shooting didn't meet the parameters of Montana's self-defense laws. Deliberate homicide. The cause of death was by criminal means. The decision is non-binding and it is up to Twido whether to file charges. And so I want to take an opportunity to speak to some of those jurors and get some more insight as to why they felt they needed to ask that question or what was their purpose behind that type of question. Once I get some of those specific things answered that I found out during the inquest, then I'll make a charging decision on Mr. Troxel. Whatever happens next, Duran's family feels like the inquest provided closure. It just makes me feel like, you know, my son was justified. <laughs> In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Local forecast coming up, but first, what's going on across the nation today? Your headlines for the 48s. Southern Plains, lower Mississippi Valley, we're looking at a moderate risk of excessive rainfall. The Southern Plains, there is a risk of severe thunderstorms. In fact, you can see around Amarillo there, where we have uh, that brown shaded area, that's an enhanced risk. What that means is a better opportunity to possibly see some tornado activity. Uh, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, all the way up to the northeast, temperatures 15 to 25 degrees above average. For us, it is going to be warmer than average for some of us today, um, but it's not going to be a big, big warm up. Then we have this cold front coming in to cool us down briefly. And then what happens when that front passes through as we head toward the weekend? Maybe some good news for some of us anyway who like the warmer temperatures. <laughs> we'll talk about that coming up. A photo of black bears being dumped in the Logan landfill near Bozeman recently surfaced on Reddit. We're told by Montana FWP the bears had been euthanized. As resident and bear populations continue to grow in southwest Montana, bear conflicts are becoming more likely. These conflicts often lead to euthanization of bears who become food conditioned and habituated to certain areas. Bears become food conditioned and habituated. They do have to be euthanized. Bears are, are usually euthanized uh, through lethal injection. Um, and uh, because of that, um, and because they have, you know, those drugs in their system, they do have to go to a landfill. A, a trend that we're seeing in Montana uh, is that we have strong bear populations, but we, we also have a, a growing human population as we have more people living in places where bears are. FWP says it is doing what it can to educate residents on bear safety.